Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel where I talk about all kinds of edible things that I grow in my food forest here. Now I can say my permaculture food forest. Welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel. On this channel I help you integrate systems into your backyard that will serve both you and your family for years to come. So let's all explore the new possibilities and not just be the next boring yard. Let's go beyond our shores and explore possibilities that are right in front of us. So please subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified as new videos come out all the time. So let's see what's going on in this episode of EV Explorer. It is a beautiful, beautiful March evening in Central Florida and I am so pleased with the state of my yard after making a few really important and meaningful changes. I got bunnies and so now I have a copious amount of bunny manure flowing into the yard which has made a huge difference. I've got a worm farm which digests a lot of the bunny manure but produces vermiculture, worm tea and worm castings that I put it all around and I'm growing a number of new plants and trees this year that I'm really excited about. One is moringa. I'm actually transplanting a banana grove that's over in the corner of my yard there. It's about 80% transplanted now. And replacing it with moringa, roselli, mulberry, and more. I've actually got some okra back there too. And in this video, I am going to show you about how much rabbit manure is produced in a two-day period. I make sure that I clean uh, the rabbit waste out from underneath the cage about every two days, sometimes every day. And that gives a lot of bunny manure. Now these are two little, cute little lion head bunnies. They're each about three months old. They've still got more to grow and they are producing a good amount of manure and I wanted to give you just a general idea of if you get two little bunnies, how much manure can you produce? Hey Jack. Hello. Hey, will you be my cameraman today? Sure. All right, here. It's on. Sure. Okay, first I need to get my gloves. Never don't spend the two bucks it costs to get a cheap pair of gloves with leather fingers and palm. Avoid so much band-aid cost, it's amazing. Alright, let's go find a bucket. We got buckets everywhere. In fact, this bucket filled up with rainwater. That's how much it rains and the sprinklers. Okay, take a look in this worm farm here. Let's see if we can catch the worms. Focus down in there. See all those bunny berries? Any worms? Any worms going? No, they're all hiding. Yeah, this will help water it down. This water that we're using here to water the worm farm is also going to be filtering down through the soil. It'll also soften up those berries so the worms can eat them easily and it will produce worm tea right out of this nozzle. Let's see if there's any worm tea. Yeah, keep it nice and stable, Jack. Nothing. Yeah, just emptied it out. Oh no! Just as I was going to change it, Penelope just relieved herself. Okay, well I got these two awesome pans over at a local store and I, this one I already shuffled it from one side of the pan. But what you see here is a mixture of hay and bunny pellets. And the cool thing about having this square pan is they all just kind of shuffle down into the corner. And then can be easily emptied out. And then you just wash this out every so often. All right, that's one. Here's the other one. Funny thing is, I built this rabbit hutch, which by the way, I'm going to do a video about, so stay tuned if you're going to get rabbits of your own, which I would encourage you to do. And by the way, if you're going to get rabbits of your own, I would encourage you to get them so that they are outside because I don't know how you could possibly maintain a litter that produces that much rabbit manure. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. This is a really
fairly clean setup too. Doesn't smell. Very far down from where the bunnies are, so that you know the bacteria and stuff is, is nowhere near where they are. Uh, anyway, so there you go. That's get all this waste off, but that's thick with berries. I'd say that's a good three or four cups of bunny berries. All right, let's pick the lucky plants that it goes on. What do you think, Jack? I don't know. What's about to fruit? That's what we want to think of. The mangoes all That about is fruit. probably about to fruit. The strawberry tree? Well, I don't know. I saw flowers on it. Yeah, it's got flowers. Yeah, I gave this some before, but I'm going to give it some more. I think I'm going to get my little sand shovel. This is my method. Which I'll continue to evolve. Look at that. That's a lot. Of That's the good stuff. But this shovel this makes it so easy. Just sprinkle some around. And the cool thing about bunny berries is that you can. That's a lot. Is that you can add them directly to your plants. You know, unlike some of the more hot manures, the you know, basically all the other manures I know about, except for maybe, I've heard of people using guinea pig manure, <laughs> believe it or not. Now okay. this Barbados cherry here, yeah, back up so that you can see the whole tree. This Barbados cherry is not really flowering that much, and I want to encourage it to flower. And I don't know of any other better way to encourage it. Okay, what else? Mm. What else? I keep, I keep thinking, where have we already fertilized? I think these banana trees, we transplanted this whole banana grove from over there to here because we're going to build a moringa grove. That'll give them lots of nutrients for their newly emerging roots, which I know are growing like crazy now. Whenever you transplant those big bananas, they immediately start growing roots. They've got a lot of energy already stored up in the large cutting. Like some of those bananas that I transplanted were at least, at least 10 feet long, just the trunk part. I mean, that's a tall, big piece. And they weighed a good 100, 150 pounds, some of those cuttings each. So now we'll give it the nutrients for it to keep on going, but it's got a lot of plant energy already stored up. All right. You know, look at the, this is kind of spindly. The starfruit tree this time of year, the carambolas, always seem kind of spindly. This year we're going to try to avoid that, but you know, I just, I also can look around these trees and see where, which trees I can see some remnants of some bunny berries that I put on there before. This one I gave a fair amount to. I'm going to hit this ever-bearing mulberry because it's producing a lot. And by the way, <laughs> this is total rabbit return right here because these mulberries, they have actually have eaten only the green ones, but these mulberry leaves and branches are a rabbit favorite. Both Thumper and Penelope chow down on rabbit, on uh, mulberry bark and mulberry. Look at those big mangoes. Fruits. Yeah, look at these mangoes. Look at these mangoes. Ooh, man. Berries. I'm gonna feed them berries. <laughs> the Tommy Atkins has got beautiful fruit. And this year it's, I don't know. There might be so many mangoes on the tree this year that the fruit tree just collapses from the weight. <laughs> There you go. Easy. That's the whole process, really. And then every once in a while, I'll take some of those bunny berries and I'll just uh, put them into the worm composter. And the other thing we like to do for the worms is the rotten papayas, which we get a lot of those rotten papayas. And I see a couple up there. 
But basically any food scraps you have, any vegetable scraps, not like meat scraps, but you can put any vegetable scraps right in there. You don't want to put like lemon peels or citrus stuff in your in the worm farm. There are some things you can't put in there, but most of the greens you can put in. Uh, if you're going to put like cuttings from stuff into the worm bin, you really want to compost them first. Like anything you put in there, that's why I use rotten papayas. Anything that you put into the worm farm, you want to be partially broken down and cut up into as small pieces as possible so they can get access to it and they don't have to break it down. They, just, they want to come to something already rotting. If you're putting stuff into that worm farm uh, that's rotting though, like papaya, you're going to draw in fruit flies. And that's not a problem, really. It's just that it's annoying and then you might get mold. So what I like to do is when I chop down some papaya to feed the worms, I, uh, I bury it partially underneath the soil. I've also added a lot of cardboard to the worm farm recently because I want to, that's a great food. They say 80% of their diet can consist of cardboard. So I, you know, we're getting boxes of stuff delivered now all the time. Those boxes end up going into the five gallon bucket to soak. I soak the cardboard, just the cardboard part. I try to take off any labels or no colored stuff on it, like a colored printing on it. I uh, soak it in the five gallon bucket for four or five hours, longer maybe, and then come back and just pull it into, into little shredded little pieces of cardboard. Then you just intermix that with the, the soil. In my case, sand. Mostly this is, my yard is really like beach sand, the consistency of beach sand, so we have to uh, renourish it constantly with organic matter and I'm trying to get to the point where my yard waste output of my yard is down very very low only the bare minimum so that I'm taking all that carbon and I'm taking all those nutrients and composting them reintroducing them back into the soil which is super important here I kind of didn't do that for a few years recently and it affected the output of fruit all throughout the yard all right so what do you think do you want to pick a rotten papaya Sure. How nice do we want to be to our worms? That's really the question. <laughs> yeah. Cruelty to worms. You know what cruelty to worms is? Not feeding them. Not giving them your rotten papayas that are right there. By the way, we have so many worms in there now that I think it might be time to start picking some and seeding them in other parts of the yard. I want to create some worm beds, but then if you create the worm bed, you got to give them what, Jack? Food. Food and? Water. Water. So then you got to remember to go throw a raw papaya on the area where they are, drop some bunny berries, and then water it down. If, you, if it goes to dry beach sand, they're, they're just going to go deep and go away. Okay, keep them. All right, let's see. See any up there? I see a yellow one that's back up in there. Whoa. This thing got so tall, I can't even get without going one-handed. All right. Am I near it? No, it's more to the right and higher. I get it. Did I get it? I think I got it. <laughs> no way. We got two for one. Two for one for one. One's a, oh, one's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Green boy. These are nice, though. That's not what I wanted. They're not rotten. All right. I don't know. I had to go in blind. <laughs> Let's see if I, can get I, I can't reach. I don't think. Yeah. Oh, one behind here. Are there any down lower? Uh, what about your other one? No, that's the one. The other thing is to pick them off the ground down here. But... Oh, God. Alright. Are there any on that one? Fall back, plan B. Papaya plant B. Yeah, get some rotten ones there. Hey, bird! Okay. Yeah, you can probably get a shot of those pretty well. I 
I see what you mean. A bird was up in there. Oh, eating that one, yeah. Almost missed. Oh, you got one too. Did you get three? Oh, you got yeah, three. I got this one. That's about right, though. You don't need a lot. That that's, a, <laughs> that's the thing. They can't. You don't have so much that it rots too much, and they can't even eat it. Oops. These two look pretty good. This one only has a rotten one end on it. Or it's not rotten. It's just ripe. Ripe's good enough. Very ripe is good enough. Any more up there? There's that one the bird was eating. Yeah. I think I'll let him come back and finish that one. All right. Let's put that there for now. Let's go ahead and put these in the warm bin. Okay. Now, the thing is. Look at that. That hardly had any seeds in it, that little one. Some of them, sometimes a papaya will prematurely. And I'll just let those seeds just go in there. And I'm just going to roughly rip it up with my hand. Okay, let me take a look at the size chunks that I'm doing. It, this is really all you need. That's the other reason I like to wear these gloves, is you don't have to worry about getting this stuff all over you. I need to break broke up into super small pieces, but small enough that there's a lot of don't squeeze the juice out of yeah, Squeeze the juice out on. I don't want to soak the gloves. All right, let's see. <clears throat> Here we go. Yep, I think that's about right. All right, now. Let's see if we can see any of these. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, as I lift this up, I don't see too many down low. I'm actually going to put down some of that in the lower part. Oh yeah. Just try to come in on the side here to hurt as few as possible. Oh yeah, they're all up at the surface of the... That's very interesting. All of them are up at the surface. I'm going to put this food down a little lower. That'll be good. Yeah, that's good for now. Just as long as they're buried. And you see, that's buried enough that they're not going to, it's, it's not going to get all infested with fruit flies, which is nice. Now, the next thing to do here is to water them in. I think I have a little water. I've got a watering can here. See this? What does that say, Jack? Worm T. Eby. That's Eby. Right. Worm T. Eby. I'm going to water that in. It's the last thing. <laughs> it's coming out of the top. Yeah, that'll work. Now, I don't leave this in the rabbit cage. I don't leave anything in the rabbit cage up on anything because, heaven forbid, it would fall off and hurt a rabbit. You just feel like they're so delicate, you know, and even leaving shovels and stuff in the rabbit run. Okay, so let's look at that. Yeah, and there's even some oak leaves in there. And I wonder oh. if this is about time to, this is about time to get a second worm bin or add more soil. You can see all the cardboard that's in there, they love that. If you lift up these card, the cardboard, you can see worms under all of it. And I was surprised that I didn't really see any down deep. But that shouldn't surprise me because there's no food down deep. Yeah. But in your yard, if you have no water, they'll go down deep naturally. And you don't want that in your yard. But the good news is, it seems like there's a lot of worms in there. And I really want to loosen up the material that I've got in here. It looks like it's getting a little looser. The more and more they eat up all this cardboard, the better it will get. It can help it. Okay, well... Thank you for watching Eat Your Backyard. I appreciate you being Thanks along on our journey today. You got to see some things that are growing around the yard and also how we're recirculating the bunny manure back into the yard, back into the worm composter. 
into our plants that are about to produce fruit into our trees and uh, it's really paying off. So thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and let me know in the comments what you think or if you're going to implement any of this stuff in your yard. We all like to get inspired. Thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard.